Hello, here we're looking at five code snippets for replacing WordPress coming soon and maintenance plugins. In my last video where I looked at WP Code Box, I mentioned that I would like to share the snippets that I'm gathering to reduce my dependency on WordPress plugins. And in this article, I listed a whole bunch of different types of plugins that I'm replacing. And of course, here I am just talking about coming soon and maintenance. You don't need WP Code Box to follow along with this there is a blog post article which I'll link to below this video and you can simply go here and grab the snippets you need and add them to your child themes functions PHP file but if you are working a lot with code snippets then it's worth taking a look at WP code box as it makes it so convenient being able to add in all of your snippets here and turn them on and off as you like and organize them in folders upload them to the cloud so they're always readily available and for me this plugin is more than a simple code snippets plugin as it's allowing me to introduce sassy CSS to my WordPress workflow. Additionally, I owe a big thanks to its author, Ovidu, for his ongoing support and for helping me to fix one of my own coding attempts, which I've included in this post. I'm not a programmer, but I find it really empowering to be able to try and work with code. And if you'll forgive me, I just want to try and set this in context with my simple Revolutions blog, which is really all about my journey from moving to a traditional to a more agile design process. And in that context, the traditional come in soon page is something that I don't need so much with my move to this agile data driven approach. The aim there is to get something out fast that might give us early SEO benefits and also potentially provide user behavior data. I talked about a great free tool by Microsoft called Clarity, which lets you see how be the behavior of visitors on your site. So all this kind of information could be data which will help with an ongoing design process. So the website is out there as early as it possibly can be. So it starts to pay for its own design. But of course, there's always going to be the need to hide what's not ready. So let's get on to hiding stuff with the first snippet, which is making use of WordPress's own maintenance mode. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It is what is automatically and dynamically generated when you are updating your themes and your plugins. And we can turn this on permanently. I'm going to show you the code snippets, not on my post, but in the back end of this site where I've got WP code box because I've set the font to a bit larger here. So I'm going to go in, go to my cloud snippets, to my coming soon folder and we'll turn on the maintenance page i've called it here so this is a snippet in my blog but it's taken from wp code Box's own repository of snippets it's here under maintenance and maintenance mode and it's being used here more as it might be traditionally used for quick maintenance where you want to exclude everybody even people who've got roles on your site so here it's excluding everybody except the administrators and it's doing that by setting the current user can manage options and only an admin can do that. And just note here as well, if you're not familiar with code like me, you can easily get confused by two lines that are the same, but they are doing different things. And I show this in my rearranged version of this. So on mine here, I've set the current user can edit pages. So now I can use this if I want to allow other people into the site. An editor is often my client or an author in this case. So they can go in and I can set it into this mode permanently. And the great thing about this is that it will tell search engines to go away. It outputs this 503 service unavailable code. So when you want to hide it from everyone, it's on a temporary domain, then this is perfect with this setup. You might want to change the roles here to back to manage options. If I want to do a quick maintenance, I'd probably do that. Um, and if you need to find out more about that, you can just go to WordPress's codex and find out the roles and capacities over there to change that. On this here, I've just put in some HTML just a header one and a paragraph and I've just tried to make clear what was the second line on the original snippet here that it is the page title so it's going to show up on the browser and I can actually show you that here so here it is and um, that's what's showing here and there's our header one and our paragraph over here of course this is pretty ugly but it's okay for what we want to use this for when I move on to talking about using SAS and WP Codebox to globally style sites, I'll move on to 
well, I'll try and incorporate uh, talking about how you might be able to style the maintenance mode at the same time. But here I'm only likely to use it for, say, these videos for website redesigns where I might want to let people in with this access. I may use it when there is a new project with a new domain because often with our sprint based setup for Agile, it's it's low risk to the client. The client often has the first meeting and they go straight off and pays for it, but it's ahead of them researching what they're going to do or even finalizing their domain. So to keep momentum, often I may start work on a temporary domain and show them videos. I don't want to hide the URL, but I also don't want them or their colleagues going to it and then starting to give feedback ahead of the process. Anyway, that's enough on that one. Let's move on to the next one, which is what I've seen in other articles as recommended as a snippet for coming soon pages. And effectively, this snippet also does the same because another recommendation is a plugin to help you do that restricted site access. So it's doing the same as that. And what it is doing is it's just doing the template redirect. So it's redirecting to a page of your choice. So you create your own page. You can call it whatever you like. As long as you match the snippet to what you've got in the code, it's going to work. Everybody who's not logged in is going to get redirected to that. And I can show you that here. So there we are. And it gets redirected to that page here. And you know the advantages of doing something like this, of course, over a standalone plugin is that you get to use your own page builder, your own caching plugin and SEO plugin. The downside is that you're going to have to replace or hide your headers and footers from logged out people with this. And I think, you know, a lot of themes allow you to do that dynamically. I can do it with the Beaver Builder theme. I can also do it with Beaver Thema. So even the HTML for the header and footer is not for logged out users. But otherwise, you can just hide it with CSS. And I'll talk about that in the last snippet for this. But that's pretty much all I can say on this. How I would probably use this is not the way it's set up here because I want to Ideally, I want search engines to pick up on the root domain rather than this one. But if I am setting this up, any benefits, potentially somebody could link to it and we get benefits. I don't want that to just go when the site goes live to get rid of the coming soon. So I'm likely to use this and give it a name where it can still live on when the site is live. So more likely I would use it if we've got, say, one product where there's many to come and we can put that out as a landing page or there's a special offer that will still exist after or there may be another offer later. So you can say keep it as an office page. OK, so that's how I might use that. And let's move on to the kind of upgrade the next snippet is just taking the same thing, the same idea, but in this case, it's allowing us to add in some more pages that can be publicly found. So again, we have to define them and put them in the arrays over here. And obviously the, your slug needs to match the uh, same as it would do with the redirect. But this is useful if you've got on that coming soon page, then you've got some kind of sign up and you want to thank people on that. So you can use that for that. And I think that's pretty much all I can say on that. Let's move on to what I'm more likely to want to use is a redirect to the home. So everybody who's not logged in just goes to the home page. And with this snippet, it's pretty straightforward. It's going to work whether you've got WordPress set to latest post or whether you've got it to a static home page and you don't need to change anything with this. Of course, it's the same thing with the headers and footers that you're going to have to replace. And of course, you need to have something that they can see there because you're probably going to work on that page. I may probably work on, uh, I, if I did need a coming soon page in the first place, I'd probably put one up and have this redirect on my home page and then work on a page builder template with my home until I'm ready to replace it. But generally, this is the way I would want to go with my agile approach because, and I'll be talking about this in later videos, I'm trying to find a quick way to do a basic design for some sort of styling with a SAS there. And also with my approach, what I'm trying to do is to with the agile is to go a sort of ux route where the design itself comes out of the content the content comes out of the research so one of the first things we'll be doing is to try and get some of the key copy and then we'll design around this so if the client is quite happy for something to go out that makes sense to search engines and could be potentially something they could find and it could be treated a little bit like a landing page then that's fine i mean they're not going to announce it to strangers who don't know about their domain so they probably won't feel self-conscious about it and the benefit of that is that we are working straight away with getting something out we're working live 
but it keeps telling the search engines that that site is updating all the time. So that's really the way I would go. And of course, the last snippet that I've got here um, is one where it's doing the same thing. It allows us to, in it sends us to home, but it allows us to add in some other pages. And again, you know, may need to make sure that your slugs are in there. Okay, so that's really the route I'm going. Let me just talk a little bit about hiding the headers and footers with CSS and got a few options here. So what we've got here, I've commented it out. So you could use this one clumsy use of important here, but of course it's only temporary. So you can use, uh, you set it to header, display none. And then we've got, thanks to how WordPress works, when you're logged in, there's an extra class selector that's in there, which is logged in. So we can put logged in header display block. Um, and you know, that's going to work for when you are logged in to show that. And the same with the footer, you can do exactly the same thing there. And this is a bit slick, but it will work. So header footer display none, except with the not here uh, logged in. Um, that wasn't working for me, but by accident, I stumbled on something which is entirely wrong in terms of how the CSS should work with the not here. Um, we shouldn't, we sh if anything, there should be at least a comma between these, but for some reason, and it does kick out an error if we have it set up that way on normal CSS, but I've got this in SAS on this one, so it doesn't make a fuss of it. But yeah, this does actually seem to work for some reason, something to do with specificity, but I can find absolutely nothing. So if you know about why this is working, um, yeah, but you know, it, I, I've been using it, so it's uh, kind of fine. All right, I think that's all I can say on this. Of course, there may be circumstances where you might need for a long period, a different template showing to the one that you're working on and your home. What I would do with that is, as I mentioned, I'd probably use the actual home page with a redirect to home and then work on the template and then shift it over. But I will also talk for those people who our Beaver Builder users, um, a little bit more about some other options that you might want to try out. Anyway, thank you so much for your time today. I hope this was useful and I hope to see you again in another video. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.